Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the Constitution, the law, and the events of today to you each month. Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the events of the news to you each month. Good evening, Mark. How are you doing and what are we talking about tonight? Well, first we're going to talk about AB 1014. That's a new uh, gun law, gun confiscation law passed uh, in the state of California, and that went into effect on January 1st. And are we talking about a restraining order that's directed at guns specifically, almost for no reason you can have your guns taken? Well, what's interesting about this, it's modeled after the domestic abuse law, the 243, the BC 243, which is usually a felony. And what's interesting about that, that used to be if you got in a fight with your spouse, that was domestic abuse. And then it was if someone, you had a lover or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And then it became if you dated someone. And then it became basically within you coming within a couple hundred yards of somebody and you caused them anxiety. So basically anybody you cause anxiety now can get your gun taken away. Well, you know what, Mark? I have anxiety. But yeah. does that mean that anything <laughs> that I say or my sensitivities mean I can have guns taken away from you? That's exactly right. And also, there's no due process. You can, anybody who has anxiety about anybody can go to a judge, have someone's guns taken away for three weeks, and there's no due process. Well, wait a minute. When you say no due process, there had to be some process. Is it like a drop a dime and you lose your, lose your gun time? Or what is it? Well, the thing about it is, okay, what due process is, there's two types of due process, but the main one that people usually think about is being able to confront your accused. And you're not able to confront your confuser. So your confuser, your confuser, your <laughs> confuser, your computers, whatever it is. You mean your accuser? It's your accuser. Yeah, you can't confront your accuser. So basically, right. and I don't even know if this could be anonymous. You may never know who's accusing you. Yeah, but wait a minute. So you can, how does a judge even get it in front of him to have this happen? Well, the police can do it. A family member, or if you go under domestic law, anybody you came within a few hundred yards could feel anxiety about you, and I think it might be anonymous because you don't get to face Wait them. Wait a minute, could this be a disgruntled sister? It could be a disgruntled person you didn't tip. It could a, be an uh, aunt, nephew, mm -hmm. niece, anyone, but also, grandchild. But, it, but if you're going after domestic violence law, that's, that's anybody that could possibly perceive you. In fact, someone might get anxiety by watching you on TV and then get your guns confiscated. Well, wait a minute. This or even is... if they heard about you third hand. Well, wait a minute. This sounds like it's another another excuse to confiscate weapons without due process and to violate the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And you know that we're, we're Second Amendment is what we are protected by in this country. So now they're making more administrative excuses to take weapons. Well, here's how it works. Okay, so let's say eventually, remember the drug kingpin law? Yes. And they said, oh, you know, these guys make millions of dollars a year, and they've got yachts, and they've got Learjets, and they've got mansions. So if you're convicted of being a drug dealer, right, we can take your mansion. Remember, they passed that law. Yes. But what was the actual effect of that law? Well, they confiscated a lot of goods with no proof of anything. Well, what happens, like, say, one guy has one marijuana seed in his carpet, and they vacuum it up, and they get to take his car. As a matter of fact, they had so many cars they confiscated in Oakland right, from like marijuana seeds, that the DA, the problem with cars is they depreciate so quickly that it costs them more to store the cars and auction them than they were worth. So basically, this is another one of those laws where they go, oh, this is a horrible thing. This is a, you know, domestic abuser with a gun and he's going to kill his wife or she's going to kill her husband. Of course, there's already laws on the books for that, right? But they use that as an excuse and then they put in there, if you've recently bought ammunition, if you cause someone anxiety. So down at the bottom of the page, they can take guns from anybody. Just like they said, oh, it's drug kingpins. Uh, you know, it's like the guy in, uh, what was the movie in Florida? Uh, uh, Tony Montana. Yeah, Tony Montana. Hey, hey, Tony Montana. Uh, introduce me to my new hey, friend. You, yeah. you, you don't trust me, Frank. <laughs> don't ever, yeah, but anyway, the point I'm saying is they make this big splash, like, oh, it's domestic abuse, blah, 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 blah. And then if you look at the fine print of the law, Basically, the government can turn anybody in. The anybody can turn anybody in, and any for absolutely no reason at all, with absolutely no due process, the state of California can take a gun from anybody. Well, that's in I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be challenged. And well, it I, should be challenged. And in fact, I understand this law was signed in 214, and it took this long to even implement it. Well, what's interesting about this is that if you look at um, you know some of our heroes, you know some of the great great political heroes of our time. Look at Mao Tse Tung. 
Okay. Now he confiscated guns and he had a population of 200 million. And after he confiscated the guns, what did he do? He wanted to kill off the people he didn't need. What he did is he um, had 65 million people in China at the time, and they didn't agree with Mao, right? And so what he did, he, you know, they threw human feces at them. They prayed them through the streets. They made them wear papal hats. They denounced them. They sent them to work camps where they starved to death. They broke their uh, knees with, with bats, and then they shot them after they tortured them for a couple of years. And so that's generally why these kind of despots, whether it's Pol Pot or Hitler or Mao Jerry Brown or Obama, whoever it is, well, usually when a despot wants to eliminate, you know, somewhere like, like, like say, 40 or 50 percent of the population, this is the method they use because this way um, they can go ahead and, you know, purge those things. Now, look at Stalin. How many people did he, political prisoners, deal with? Wow, millions. About 30 million. 30 million. Okay. Pol Pot, about 10 million. Okay, and Mao was the Mao yeah, was but the, the, the but Mao was the hero of gun control. Nah, yeah. Sixty-five million out of two hundred million. Yeah, sixty-five well, not million. Bad. Not bad. Good no, record. he's the hero, and he is the poster child for gun control. Is Mao, and he not only tortured people to death, and broke their kneecaps, and humiliated them, and he didn't just shoot them. You know, so I mean, the thing is, once they take your guns, they will torture you to death. And so in every country that they've done this kind of confiscation, we've had that kind of result. Well, you know what? I hate to say it, but I'm sure Jerry Brown, as we look back at Governor Moonbeam <laughs> from the 70s, had his little red book, Mao's little red book, well, yeah, with him. Did. And I guarantee he still no, has one who in is, his desk. Who is the communications uh, head for Obama? What did she say? Her hero was Mao Tse Tung. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, oh, Mao. Mao. Oh, Mao. Oh, Mao. Mao. He's such and, a good guy. And, you know, these guys sit around, and, you know, their mouth is small with mumbo jumbo, and people think it's cute because, oh, we're saving oh, the puppies. Oh, we're saving the country, but, you know, what, the environment. Whatever you, it we is. We can twist Mao into the environmentalist of all time. Well, the thing about Mao is that he wanted to eliminate anyone that was smart. Not necessarily the intelligentsia, but anyone that was willing to confront well, authority. Wasn't he making uh, people that were like bricklayers be doctors? Well, he had people who had were actually, you know, were very <laughs> undeveloped mentally, and he made them mayors. And so basically the idea is have the mayors be someone with an IQ of about 40, so the central governor has complete control. Well, he killed off, of course, all the doctors and the dentists and the lawyers. Of course, some people wouldn't complain well, about that. Well, nobody yeah, about the the school lawyers. teachers. That goes back to how many at the bottom of the <laughs> yeah, sea. Yeah, how many at the bottom of the sea? Water pollution. Yeah. <laughs> water pollution. But then, yeah. So, yeah, what do you do if you run over a lawyer? Back over him. But, back over but, but him. Basically, Make sure he's gone. If you look at Stalin, he killed all the smart people. They kill all the school teachers. They kill all the professors. They kill all the lawyers. They kill all the doctors. They kill all the dentists. They kill all the professionals. And that's... Who does that them. leave? Yeah, well, that leaves people that are... The agricultural know, people. Well, it leaves people who the are... The rice used, pickers. No, it, it leaves people who do manual labor and willing to follow rote, but that, that don't do critical thinking. And so when you see this gun control poster child, you see Obama, you see Mao, you see Obama, you see Mao, and you go... Poster child for gun confiscation and purging your political opponents. And it's a beautiful thing because, you know, it just goes over and over and over again. It doesn't matter what happens. If a, if a kid falls off a bicycle, oh, it's gun violence, right? Oh, my God, it's gun violence. Now, now what they say is 280,000 people in the last decade, right, have been killed by gun violence in the United States. Now, put aside that most of those were illegal gun owners and felons who sh wouldn't have a gun. That, that's not who they're attacking. They're attacking legal gun owners. These are all legal gun owners, okay. I know. They're not go doing anything again. It's illegal. Because I, got, I guarantee no, but you, anyone but, that gets charged with this law is somebody who has a family yeah, yeah, okay. and has friends yeah. and ha owns a gun. Well, not only that, they're legal gun owners. Now, the other point, because the other ones would already be, there's plenty of laws to cover the other ones, okay? But the point is that's 280,000. If you look at Mao and you look at Stalin, you look at Pol Pot, and you look at Hitler, that comes to about... Uh, you know, 112, 120 million political prisoners. And these aren't people who are fighting. These are not people who are demonstrating. Those these, are the people These the are country. people that were grabbed out of their house at 4 a.m. while they were asleep with their families, okay? And so you've got, and that, if you prorate that, for, there was 2 billion on the planet then, so you've got to do that times 4. So that's like 400 million. Of course. So the 280,000 who have been killed in the United States in the last 10 years is less than a quarter percent. It's not even a statistical a rounding error. It's just ridiculous. I mean, the amount of people that the government has killed after they take away guns is is 
is a huge, it's like 99.999% compared to 0.0001% of gun violence between citizens on citizens. So anybody who says, oh, gun violence, oh, worry about this, worry about this, forget about that. What you worry about is the government has guns and the people don't. Well, that's the whole thing. And under this administration, they've armed the Environmental Protection Agency. They've the armed, BLM? Yeah, they would, yeah, the Bureau of Land Management. They've armed everybody with assault weapons, assault tanks, weapon. and the whole thing. So when, if the call goes out, it won't be just the cops in the corner. It won't be just the army. It'll be anybody that carries a government badge under this administration. Well, let's also keep in mind that all these people are also, like with the IRS and the BLM. And They're the, carrying guns, the, too. Yeah, okay, the, all these ATF, they all worked to fix the 2012 election, right? Right. So they actively fixed the last election. So basically, we're not a republic anymore. We've been overthrown by a despot. A despot and a dictatorship. And, and, and so this has got nothing. This is an overthrown. Now we have, you know, this dictatorship run by these gangsters. And you know what the word And the, the same people who have the guns but are the same you know, people who overthrew the but government. But see, here's the thing. The only way these administrative agencies can even impose their strength on us is with guns. Right. Because people are tired of hearing the EPA tell me, oh, you, my water isn't, I mean, it doesn't belong to me anymore. It's a lake. Well, the thing is, when you, when you overthrow a republic, and what a republic is, and this, Benjamin Franklin said, you know, we hope you can keep this republic. This is not a democracy. This is a republic, which means people have equal rights under the law. You don't have more equal rights because you're a victim. Oh, or you have equal rights because it's, it's equal or rights. Or you're a protected class. <laughs> yeah, there's none of that. That's not in the Constitution. And that's just nonsense. That is nonsense. That's all and nonsense. That, and unfortunately, nonsense. this has been, been growing like it's some like, kind oh, of... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, you're a protected class. Oh, my God. You're, you're a protected, protected class. class. That means you can't even say anything about them. Heaven forbid. Yeah. Heaven forbid. Oh, my God. Yeah, so oh, anyway, my God. So that's I'm just tired nonsense. of hearing this. That's just nonsense. A democracy is mob rule, right? And especially when you wipe out, like in the last election, you wipe out 30 or 40 percent of your opponents. Yeah. And you don't let well, them you even... Do, oh, you do that by, the, by an administrative fiat, yeah, right, effectively. Right, So you don't even let them campaign or get involved in the vote. So it's easy to rig elections, and so that's why you have a republic. That's why you have equal rights under the law. Okay, well, you know okay. what? I'm going to leave equal rights at that one, but I think we should move on to our second subject, Mark. What is our second subject? <laughs> I understand we have a visitor. Uh, our... Oh, we're back. Oh, my God. Okay, so anyway. Ali, welcome Ali, home. Yeah. Ali, 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 Ali. Uh, Ali, shake of the clock, man. Hey, thank you. Oh, we've got some new clocks. We'll go yeah, back. you know, that's a new one. Yeah, we got a new that's one. We've got to get some new clocks. I notice it's with the fine That's straight from my round. I mean, fact, Siri, you know I always the best get, part about this? I always the get best part about this, it's matching colors. Yeah, I always it's get Iran and Syria mixed up. But yeah, we're from the, Syria. The, 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 the main body mm -hmm. itself. <laughs> and by the way, you notice the fine, the fine work. The okay. fine work. Okay, so anyway, I got a new job besides making clocks and being an IRS navigator, explaining yes. stuff to people oh, who don't get Oh, the IRS navigator. Yeah, you got to help them through the way. Well, because Are you armed, Ali? A lot of people don't understand the Jewish world. So anyway, but now i got a job at a bookshop, oh, a bookstore, and it's a lot what of fun. What store is that? Well, the thing about it is, I don't want to go into that, but we had a guy come in the other day, right? And he said, um, I want to buy Trump's new book. And I don't like Trump at all, right? Because I'm always that, shaking. Allie? Well, because Wait Trump... a minute. And so anyway, Wait so minute. this is what I don't tell him. Don't this you understand is, this that is, we need a new man in the White you know, House? This is, this is what I told the fellow. I said, look, he said, he, he came in, he said, I want to buy Trump's new book, but I can't remember the title. You know what I told him? What? I said, get the heck out of here and never come back. You know what he said? He said, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, okay, moving right along. So the thing is, yeah, the Navigators... That's have, actually a pretty good book. Yeah, the Navigators... It's on the top ten. The New York's Navigators... Top 10. Okay, so, you, okay, why don't you tell the audience, what's an ambulance chaser if you're a lawyer? Well, an ambulance chaser has been referred to as an attorney that sometimes will... Go to a hospital and look for somebody that's been injured in an auto follow accident. Follow the ambulance to the and hospital. And they follow the ambulance to the hospital, and then they're out there handing out their business cards, and they're hoping they can hustle well, they some business. they sign people while they're, yeah, they're sedated. And they yeah. actually have in their pocket, they yeah, have attorney-client agreements. Yeah. And they just fill in the names. Oh, what's your name? Oh, uh, John Smith yeah. here. Just sign at the bottom. I'll represent you. Now, that's an so ambulance. So in the chaser. proud tradition of ambulances, we, ah, have, we, have, proud Loretta, tradition. we have Loretta Lynch, right? Oh, the yes. The new attorney general, right? And what she did is she put a call and said, like, anybody who makes a claim that uh, you've been discriminated against if you're a Muslim, we'll investigate and we'll get... Oh, we'll right. do it immediately! So he, they put out this call, and, and the navigators had answered, and there's actually a fellow um, who answered... Uh, what was his name? Uh... 
He was. Uh, You're not talking about Mr. Moore. Moore, yeah, Moore. Yeah, Moore. Well, Moore. Wait a minute, Mr. Moore answered all right. Yeah, well, he but answered, how did he answer? He answered Laura Letta Lynch's call. And so there's a call out, okay, we need these cases. It's like an ambulance chasers thing, like. If anybody, you know, gets discriminated against, yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. Muslim, yeah, yeah. heaven forbid, so, time out. So anyway, yeah. So Mr. Moore, what's his first name? What's his first name? I believe I have it right here. Yeah, uh, Daniel or well, I got him Nathan right here or something like that. Anyway, Mr. Moore answered Lorenzo Rich's call and basically, now what do you? Why don't you explain to the audience what manufacturing a case is? Well, manufacturing a case is when you you know the you know the details of what you're looking for in an investigation, and what you want to do is you want to establish that uh, in this case uh, under this administration, it's mostly that it was racist, that it was done against a protected class, and that somebody that's on the opposite side, normally white. Christian or infidels, yeah, yeah and infidel. No, it could be Jews, could it. be Jews, so or, it know. could be anybody, but they have to be white and no, they have infidel. to be an infidel. They, be infidel. they have infidel. to be non-Muslim. So in this basically, case. what is Laura Landis put this call out? This ambulance. She basically put the ambulance siren Wah. on Wah. and said, "Anybody that wants to demonize an infidel, we will make famous and rich." Right, and so Moore answered that call. Oh, his name is Gary Nathaniel Moore. Gary Nathaniel Moore. What he did is he was... But that's not his Muslim name. Yeah, but he used to pray at this, this mosque five times a day for, In Houston. for many years, and then he burned it down. And then, you know what? Yeah. And then it was like, and then oh it was my like, God! Oh, the are burning down mosque. Woo! So this is okay. a Christian. And so, okay, we got, we got ambulance chasing, we got manufacturing a case, and also, when the police start a riot, what do you call it? They call it creating emergency. Oh, my God. So we and got Loretta, heaven forbid, it's, so, you know what it is? So we it's got a Loretta, class. We got Loretta Lynch manufacturing evidence, manufacturing cases, ambulance chasing, and now she's creating an emergency. And it's so, an emergency. And the proud, you got to protect all the Muslims. In the proud tradition of the sleaziest, sleaziest thing a lawyer can do, Loretta Lynch is out there in the forefront. And so you know what? We and she's the attorney general. general. We gotta and you know hand. what? Uh, just when I thought nobody could top Eric Holder, <laughs> here it comes. No, I mean, this is going to make lawyer jokes funnier for the next century. I mean, you've never had well, a you don't sleazier, want to sleazier yeah, lawyer. Yeah, well, that. there's actually some better ones. It's, uh, <laughs> if you want to get into the prosecution of those police officers by but Mosby. But anyway, this is really sleazy. So, and if you go on, there's the, the, so this thing is like they're manufacturing the cases. So everywhere they're looking, trying to manufacture a case. So that's a real hobby of some real sleazebag attorneys. And Laura Leonard really, really fits that, that, fits that, fits that pattern. And so here they, when they first heard about this, oh, this is infidels, discriminating on monthly, burning down things. And, but the police did some real police work. But what happened? Oh, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. But well, this, I heard the administration's Okay, response. wait a minute. No, here's what the thing, but the president, President Obama addressed this issue of Islamic terrorism in his State of the Union speech last night. Did you hear it? Yes, I did. And Not. here's here's some of the really strong things he said. He said he condemned uh, Islamic terrorists for cutting off the heads of infidels. Here, let's listen for a second. Wait a minute. Is this what I heard? Yeah, well, Wait, he's, he's giving it to him. This is what we heard last night. On he's the, really hey, giving it to him. State him. of the Union. He's really laying into. Oh, Muslims. he's laying into those guys. He's laying into the Muslims. Okay, well, okay, what about? Oh, here's Obama criticizing them for burning blasphemers of Muslims. Let's listen to that. Oh, he's going Wait after him. You know what? He's I also really going heard, after him. I also heard him about the ten sailors that were uh, were confiscated uh, illegally by the Iranians. What was his commentary? Well, he's, he's really digging into those guys, I'll tell you. And, you know, I heard John, gotta, I, gotta, I, uh, John Kerry was talking about it as well. What did John <laughs> Kerry have to say? He was Secretary of State. Well, he's really getting on going after well, those guys. that's pretty now, I'm, I'm glad we have someone looking out for us. I really am so glad and that then, what, what, what the administration is looking about out for all German, the normal... What about, uh, what about the seven-year-old girl that was in Germany in Cologne and the, 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 of the host family and then the asylum seeker, the Muslim asylum, stabbed her with a knife? What did he say about that? I, anyway. What did he say about it? I think it's here. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man, wow. that's a strong statement there. You know, <laughs> wow, you know what? You're right. It is what a about strong a, What about in Cologne where the 375 oh, guys at the trace? a bunch of New, girls. New Year's Eve. New Year's oh, Eve. yeah, <laughs> you know what? What else <laughs> no, no, did no, you no, do? No, 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 listen, listen to what he said in the state of What did he say about it? Oh, he's after those Islamic terrorists, that's for sure. He's, well, he's, he's going after them. He's Man, he's, he's tough on. He's, he's so rough on oh, that. Oh man, he's I understand that. He's such a strong is, guy. He he made such commentary on that. Wow, That's listen right. to that. Listen to that. He's I really going after it. You know what's interesting? You can almost hear a pin drop. Anyway, so that's one thing. He's really making a strong statement there, and there you go. Okay.
But anyway, um, let's. <laughs> so the that's one the state thing of the that, union. Okay. Well, the only issue that I have about Mr. Moore is they caught him. And they well, found the that he was him. actually but Muslim. Notice, but notice the feds didn't catch him. The feds didn't catch him because the, they, they were looking call. for a uh, Christian Well, no but, listen to, no, but look what happened to the San Bernardino thing. Another Christmas attack. This was a Christmas burning. Oh, by the way, this is all Christmas happened on Day. Christmas. All happened on Christmas. Christmas. The shooting in San Bernardino. Murder the Christmas. F the FBI, there were three guys, and then the FBI said there's only two. And we killed him, so there's no witnesses. There's no witnesses. It sounds like the Kennedy assassination. Uh, well, anyway, I think so, we should move forget, on to our third subject tonight. Forget about and the you, feds. The feds are not going to find wait anything. A minute, I got a question. Local are we talking about Jason Bourne? Jason Bourne. Okay, Jason Bourne was the guy who felt so conflicted that he decided to... To overturn the CIA in that movie, right? Yeah, that's correct. And so here we got Bo. Bo. Are and, we talking uh, about Bo Bergdahl? Bo. And now the thing about Bo, I understand from kind of like the gossip when, if within the IRS navigators that actually Obama has a little guy crush on Bo. Because, oh, you know. He, he, I thought he had it on his dad. Yeah, he really likes Bo. And because Bo did like stuff in Afghanistan that was pretty extraordinary. Like, what did he do? Well, first of all, he deserted his troops and he created a search for him that lasted and killed uh, five to seven military operatives. Well, so wait a minute, searching. how did five Americans get killed because of Bo Begra? Because he walked away, he deserted his unit, which was on a basic mountaintop in Afghanistan. Got right. And But uh, his, his comrades said that he actually went out to get high and just never came back. No, but weren't the five or seven soldiers who went searched for him and they were killed they searching were killed. for him. They and were killed. They were trying to rescue him. Part. They were killed in ambush by by uh, improvised explosives. Uh, it's right. like somebody had told. Yeah, wait a minute. You mean like Christmas Just presents? Just like, like a Christmas, Christmas present. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. And actually, you know what the whole deal was? It was like somebody was guiding yeah, right. the Taliban. The all actually the El Nostra Front. Somebody right. was guiding them right. on how you how they so how they search. What, what you're saying is that Bo takes off for one reason or another. He kind of changes the story a few times, but he, he over and over again. Bergdahl took off a couple of times. Uh, I mean, he had some stories, but he took off from his unit, which is a combat unit. Under it's in war. It's a combat it's unit. It's in war. He's not in. He's deserting he's, war. He, he's not in R and R. No, no, he's not in Florida. Having yeah, yeah, that's not R. So he's in a combat Mo mission. Mojitos. He takes off, right? And uh, five or seven of his comrades comrades go out to rescue U.S. Him. troops. Rescue him. Right? Right. And they end up dead by the they Taliban. They end up dead. Okay. And so that's kind of one of his, his, his great accomplishments here. Well, you know, it's interesting. Jason Bourne, yeah. when he was trying to come back in after he'd been on deep cover, right. he, he didn't really cause a bunch of men to be dead. Yeah. But in fact, uh, he was trying to get back in. But and so when he compares himself to Jason yeah. Bourne, I, I, I wonder, you know, Jason Bourne well, wasn't, think, wasn't put before a military tribunal for a general mm -hmm. court martial well, either. I, but I also think that whoever is... Uh, Bo's lawyer came up with a pretty good story on that one. Well, he, you know why he used a Jason Bourne? Because everyone loves Jason yeah, everyone Bourne. Everyone loves Jason Bourne. Yeah. Yeah. But wait a minute. We're forgetting one he plays part. plays on the guilt. Yeah. Let's talk about this. He's being charged with desertion and endangering fellow soldiers, which means, unlike a misdemeanor, he's could, if he's convicted of both of these, especially endangering uh, other soldiers, he can get life in prison. Yeah, but this is a little incongruous because wasn't Bo's dad and his mom Honored in the Rose Garden by President uh, yes. Obama. Yes, and funny enough, we weren't told, but his dad's Muslim. But no, but ha! the point of the matter is, he he was. They were honored in the Rose Garden. Now, how many Marines or sailors has Obama honored in the Rose Garden besides Bo? Zero. Oh, really? That's right. So the only and, and, so the only one he's ever honored in the Rose Garden, which is the most prestigious thing in the White House, and, and is a deserter. Actually, on the face of the earth, is a deserter. Is a deserter. Okay, and now, but how do we get that deserter back? Well, that's funny. That it's funny you should ask that. There was five top. Taliban generals right. the, in, in Gitmo, Guantanamo uh -huh. Bay, and funny enough, without telling Congress, which was totally unconstitutional, magically, they flew away. Yeah, and then Bo drove well, up well, in well, a white well, pickup well, truck well, and got wait, dropped off. No, but wait a minute. These five generals in uh, Guantanamo, I mean, they were nice guys. I mean, of course, they burned infidels who blasted to death. And they murdered U.S. No, troops. No, no, no. They burned infidels to death in cages. They chopped off people's heads. They ordered the rape of infidel women and children. Okay. What else are you supposed to do and if they, you're out for a good time? And, they, and you're Islamic and, terrorist. And they did IEDs that killed American troops. But 
Weren't they tortured in Gitmo? Oh my God! Yeah, no, they didn't get to see. You know what the worst part was? TV shows. You know what? They didn't get the TV shows. Oh my God! They didn't get TV shows. You know what the problem was? They got, they got fed, you know, special mm -hmm. health diets. Well, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't they get? They got to play soccer. You know, they built a ten million dollars soccer field. No, but weren't field. they tortured in Gitmo? Oh yeah, they were tortured. I mean, did they have because their? It was hot. No, no. Wait a minute. Were they burned alive? Oh no. Did they get their heads chopped off? No, no heads. Were they were raped? They were not raped. Well, wait a minute. Then how were they tortured? Well, the, the funny part about that was they were tortured because they had to play soccer with their buddies. Oh. Yeah. They had, they, oh, you know what the worst they were they Because they didn't get first pick. They didn't get first oh, pick. Oh, my God. That's terrible. That's terrible. Picky choosy. Oh, they all got to sign teams, okay? That's what's wrong. Oh, my God. And you know what? You know, oh. you know that those the average chair is put on 20 well, pounds? Hey, hey no, no wonder you got to chop off the heads of all those hey, infidels. Hey, you got to chop them. They don't get first pick. You know what? The first thing they said was, oh, I love Soccer pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all over. Okay, so yeah, so these guys who chopped off people's heads, burn them alive. Burn them alive. Rape people. Rape people. They were being tortured because they didn't get the right. No, they got the wrong hummus. They got the wrong hummus. Okay, yeah, okay, that's kind no of where no no all that. No wonder we had to let them go. Yeah, yeah we had to let them go. We had to send them back. The, 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 but by the way, we got Bo. Oh, we got Bo. Oh, we got Bo. Oh, we got Bo. And by the way, Bo almost got released. And by the way, he got an honorable discharge, and he got back pay for five years. Oh, yeah, he, he, oh, he, yeah, he, he had to get Bo no, that back no, pay. No, Bo was just about to walk. And Bo was about to walk, oh, but then, fight. funny enough, a new general came in. Well, I think this general was probably not afraid of getting bumped off like the last one. Well, like you mean the yeah. last? Oh, you mean the whole Joint Chiefs that were bumped yeah, off on this administration? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were fired, yeah, right, or they were they were asked to retire. Well, I think also the general. You mean the ones that talked back I, to the president? I, the ones that talked back to this president, I think, are afraid of being assassinated. Well, the worst yeah. part is, you know, they're afraid of being set up for some kind of blackmail like well, Petraeus, yeah. General yeah. Petraeus. You yeah. know what he had? He yeah. had one email. Well, he had oh, no, 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 his, his mistress saw his calendar. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, it's all over. It's not like 30,000 emails. It's not 30,000 like, emails. 1,200 of them were classified. By, <laughs> by the way, the funny part about that, there's emails talking about how you change the email heading so it doesn't look like it's it's uh, top secret. And plus the article, like, what to do if you want to destroy all your emails. Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, the article was in the email. Yeah, how do you destroy your emails? Nothing happens there. And Lois Lerner, nothing happens there. Uh, Lois Lerner, uh, nothing rigging, here to look. Rigging the election. Ah, uh, rigging the election. Getting rid of the tea party. Allowing, you know, investigating all the files. Oh, betrayal. Oh, betrayal. Oh, you know why? Because General Petraeus knew too much. Well, because he wanted to fight instead of surrender. Yeah, and he know what else he said? Well, he was on different, basically, Obama and Petraeus on two different sides. Obama's not against the war on terror, he's just on the other side. He's on the other side? He's on the other side. That's and that's funny, because we, we don't want to get into it, but it's funny how the Iranian deal... Oh, oh that's 150 it. billion. Tomorrow they get 150 billion bucks. And, and, and what do they do? They they, 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 party. they grab two patrol boats. Yeah. Well, you know why two they do that? Did you, know, did you know that... Just to throw sand Wait a minute, you've heard of Valerie Jarrett, right? Yeah, well, she's my favorite... You know uh, that Valerie Islamic Jarrett, terrorist. that little rat woman that's <laughs> Obama's puppet master? Yeah, she's, she's an oh, Islamic come on. terrorist. She's a, come on. Oh, come on. She's yeah. Iranian. She's an Islamic terrorist. That's, how, how many times have you seen that in the news? Do you know why Obama is so pro-Iranian? Yeah, well, because his little right-hand Muppet <laughs> is actually Iranian. Well, we don't really know. We don't know that. We it's really, only a coincidence. We really don't know why. She the, was born and raised in Iran. We really don't know why, you know, the guy who oh, yeah, toppled yeah, yeah. the U.S. government. Let's talk about that $150 billion. What are we doing with that? Billion, that's going to be tomorrow. Aye, two that's, days. That's going to be and our now, next. How many?